Alright guys, let's get Mr. Anonymous' take on ReZero Season 3 cut content finale. Subaru's greatest risk yet, a curse, a sacrifice, and a plan. In only 8 short episodes, we've got 4 archbishops attacking, Subaru dealing with phenomenon he can't even understand, Amelia captured, Beatrice in a coma, Garfield dealing with some serious- I totally forgot about Biko. Yo, Biko basically a rem right now. <laughs> I'm kidding, but Biko is just- Biko voice actor just showed up for about 2 episodes and fucked off, huh? <laughs> and now she's just sleeping. When is she gonna come back? <laughs> I don't know. Chris in a coma. Garfield dealing with some serious personal issues. Wilhelm also too. dealing with some serious personal issues. Reinhardt being Reinhardt. Krush permanently disfigured. Al being sus. Mimi mm -hmm. and her brothers close to death. Julius lacking self confidence. Then Priscilla somehow coming out on top as the unexpected heroine. There's also unexpected heroine. Nah, I think as expected. Because Priscilla clearly said, this world is designed for me to always be in a winning position. Everything is favorable towards me. Is that just narcissistic bullshit? Or does she have a divine protection or blessing that allows this to happen? Who knows? Heroin. There's also Felix thinking he's useless, as well as Otto scurrying about dropping bombshells. Otto also sus. Best boy all over again. Otto and Al, both so sus. So, yeah. It's a lot. So much so that the anime has had to gloss over a lot of it. This unfortunately means the side characters don't get the development they deserve, but that's exactly why I'm here. So if you want to see what from the novel didn't make it into the finale, stick around because I'll be going Let's through Let's go. All of it. I also highly recommend watching last week's video too because I if did. there was any episode to define who Subaru is as a character, this one does it perfectly. It also reveals quite a few secrets Ow. you might want to know about Al. But anyway, just one last reminder that the oh. Sakube shirts are only a Motherfucker, he, he did the ad read differently. There was no pause. Usually there's a b black screen after he does the intro. And then he says, but before we get started, he, 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 this, this is a way more smooth transition. He got me. Available till Monday. So if you want to get them before they're gone for good, be sure to check out Succubay.shop. They're new and improved with a high quality print on heavy durable Sheesh. cotton. Fully made in house and shipped internationally. Okay. So if you want a good Christmas present for your local Overlord fan, then this is right up their alley. Hey, why don't we share that link, huh? He's always, you know, giving us so much content. Here's a link to Mr. Andy News's t shirt shop, clothing shop. Go check it out. Okay. Episode 58 The Person You Will Fall in Love With. Covering chapters 4 and 5 from volume 18 of the light novel. When Reinhardt came in and apologized for being late, a simple sorry wasn't enough for everyone to just forgive him. Mm -hmm. Sure, it would have been easy to just accept it and smooth things over, but because Reinhardt's presence was such an invaluable asset, everyone couldn't help but wonder how the fights would have turned out had he been there. We would have won. <laughs> that's, that's the reason. And we can't just win always. And, you know, the story will be easy. easy. You, what's, the, what's, the, what's the fucking fun? Where's the fun? when Reinhardt solves everything. That's why he's always just benched and nerfed with really creative ways. It was a thought that made it difficult to hide their true feelings. Subaru was the only one actually ready to move on, so after jokingly calling him out and making light of his late arrival, really? he helped everyone else to voice how they really felt. I didn't realize other people were upset Reinhardt was gone. Reinhardt just pulled up and showed his, you know, aura, and everyone was like, Woo, Reinhardt's your glaze! But I guess in the source material, they are like, bro, Come on, man. You gone again? He basically framed it like an opportunity they'd never get again. If there was ever any time to express their grievances to a person like Reinhardt, this was likely the only time they'd get to do it. So, aside from everyone else giving him an airful, Subaru's own complaint was that he waited until after the speech. <laughs> if there was any person who could fill the masses with courage like how he did, nah. Subaru believed that person was Reinhardt. I think that someone so strong Giving hope to people could definitely be another way of giving people inspiration and motivation, but Reinhardt is not the average person. There might be a disconnect. It might be too... I don't know. It, it, it's not relatable. The whole thing about Subaru's speech was how he represented a common man and how he felt the same level of despair and angust, anguish and sorrow as everyone else, but then built them up. Reinhardt is already such a giga chad, and he only failure is his family. If he gave the speech... Yeah, I bet people would be motivated, but not to the same level of like, 
awareness, the same level of relatability as Subaru could have done. Of course, Reinhardt naturally disagrees. He, pro he most likely does have a divine protection for that too, though. <laughs> Some sort of public speaking, motivational speech blessing, 100% he has something like that. Read because to him, any words he might say would be received completely different. He wanted to make it clear what Subaru did was something only he could do. Now, with Reinhardt providing what was essentially an army's worth of reinforcements, Subaru could approach the situation with the newfound confidence they didn't really have before. His presence alone- I feel like his presence- I, I, I bet he has a passive. I, I feel like he has a passive where if he's in the room, if he's present, everyone else is just inspired and hopeful. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how many different divine protections he has, but like he has a lot, right? Just divine protection of being in around our presence makes everyone calm and cool and can just be hopeful. Alone was enough to reassure him that they could win this. Reinhardt did have to do a bit of explaining first though, along with Otto just to satisfy everyone's curiosity. The full details behind that are something I think I'll save for a different video, but to briefly summarize why it is Heinkel took Felt hostage in the first place, well, you'd be surprised to know it had nothing to do with the witch cult at all. His explanation was, oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, I'm gonna need your help, Reinhardt. You can't go nowhere. I'm gonna hold Felt hostage. That's what he said, but it's something entirely different. Does he want the downfall of Pristella? If this dude actually did plan... The sword demon to you know not be with Teresia during the white wall subjugation then uh, i could totally see him doing even more shitty things why what's what benefits him if the pristella goes down i don't know what's heinkel thinking he wasn't working with them in any capacity whatsoever the actual reason was something far worse and it was all because heinkel far was worse. a coward all he wanted was a way to keep himself safe and oh, okay it's that easy that's what he said I thought there was like a deeper fucking meaning here. He, he just wants to survive. That's it. He just wants the protection. His best bet towards that was to be near Reinhardt. Okay, okay. So, what- I thought he was fucking doing some gigabrain conspiracy theory there of like, Heinkel actually wanted the downfall because he's the one that ordered <laughs> Tifone's remains. No, no. Heinkel just wants to live and Reinhardt is bodyguard. Better way to keep Reinhardt put than to take Felt hostage and limit his movements. That was the logic under which Heinkel was operating by. The whole thing was one of Reinhardt's greatest failures, and the disappointment he felt for himself was truly immeasurable. It was pain evident by his expressions showing that he truly was hurt by his own shortcomings. Mm. Otto would then go on- Reinhardt, it's just so interesting how he is just the most OP person ever, so strong, so gifted, everything. You would think that he is God's chosen one, yet even he has his downfalls, and his downfall is just all about- family and his own self-perception of how he's only just a hero. That line of, Reinhardt, you're only a hero, that's all you can ever be, I think it really strikes deep. Because this character, even when Subaru treated him as like a normal person and says, you know, I'll have your back too, it was like a sense of relief and like how other people viewed Reinhardt. He, he's a very complex person if you think about it. All his humbleness, the way that he goes out to, you know, glaze other people and say like, oh, you know, I'm not that special. It, it's just, comes from a place of like, guilt maybe this self-perception of he's not what he seems to be there's a there's like a sense of insecurity there that i'm sensing the more i watch reinhardt scenes and how he is around specifically around his family and when you know characters like subaru interact with them to recount what happened with himself next but since most of that went how we saw in earlier episodes the only thing that needs mentioning is how he escaped as it turns out just <laughs> Pandora. like how it was for anastasia Kiritaka's private forces had come in and saved him. Sure. They arrived as reinforcements when they heard the tower I don't believe it. Sieged, I don't believe recognized it. Recognized Otto as an emissary of the Amelia camp, then did everything in their power to create an opening for him. This unfortunately came at the cost of their lives, but once again, this white dragon scale force had proved their effectiveness. Yeah, they get off-screened all the time. They're just the perfect meat shield for, you know, Anastasia and Otto there, I guess. They've been both saved, but like, is that really what happened? <laughs> Is that really what happened? They truly were the cornerstone of Pristella's defenses. The fact they couldn't be repaid pained Otto greatly though, since as a proud merchant who always repaid his debts, knowing this one couldn't be settled really bothered him. Wow. I don't know, I thought a shrewd merchant 
would always be like, oh, I don't have to pay the debt anymore because they're dead. Easy money. But no, he doesn't think like that. It had led him to the decision to pay it back by guaranteeing the fate of the city. Okay. It was the least he could do for the ones who saved him. Bro, Ada is basically his own main character right now, doing his own thing. It's actually so fun just to like imagine from the shoes of Otto instead of thinking of Subaru. He's just always doing something right now. Like Otto is moving independently. Al is too. Like, what are they doing? They're so sus. Moving on to the discussion about the four demands now. The tome was currently in the possession of Darts. The famous Oh. This is the uh restorationist. The you know, Otto wanted to restore the gospel, right? The grimoire, the tomb of wisdom, in order to see if Roswell had any time lag, you know, plans up his sleeve. Restorer who Otto had sought assistance from. If anyone could bring this book back from the charred ashes it currently was, Darts was the specialist who could do it. Okay. He was proficient in magic that could restore it from practically nothing. So, with Otto having dropped the tome's remains off by him, that meant its current location was Darts' workshop. What if Al goes and kills Dart? <laughs> Just like how Al... Like, what's the incentive there? I don't know. Uh, in order to never allow a scenario where the Witch Cult receives the Tomb of Wisdom, Al will go and kill this guy. Does the Witch Cult even know the state of the Grimoire right now? I'm not sure. Probably not, but like, I could see Al doing this. Beatrice was explained to be the artificial spirit after, confirming Julius's suspicion that something was different about her. This made Subaru a little bit worried since if any spirit user could distinguish Beatrice just by looking at her, mm. it meant she was in more danger than he thought. Subaru felt he wouldn't be able to leave her side due to the risk of someone possibly realizing who she was. Uh oh. Since the witch cult hadn't identified her by name yet, it was of the utmost importance to keep her identity secret. Okay, but is it okay to assume that the artificial spirit really is Biko? Because, like, Tape is misdirections. It really might be someone else, and we're being led to think it's Biko. It most likely is, but, like, you never know. Luckily for Subaru, only a spirit user as skilled as Julius could tell. Okay. So there really wasn't anything to worry about. Subaru then went... There's no other spirit users that can tell, right? Is Pandora around? I'm not sure. Don to confirm the silver-haired elf was Amelia, leading to a very over-the-top proclamation that he would be the one to save her. This wasn't the same as all the other times he usually did, since this time Subaru shouted proudly that only he would be the one to marry Amelia. Part of me wishes that he said this during the speech. Maybe be cringe, but that he is cringe. Again, I just wish that he kind of made a declaration to all these different archbishops and ended with Regulus and, you know, say that, like, that wedding ain't happening, but, you know, the Archbishops probably weren't even listening. That's what it was said, right? They're so confident in their plans. They don't even think that this is an issue. They left it on the, the media that allowed us to speak out, the broadcast, right? They intentionally left it on because they just don't care. It was a bold statement that led to a comedic set of reactions from those around him. Oh. These were fairly expected, but what no one present expected themselves okay. was for Subaru to express his feelings so explicitly and confidently. The one person whose reaction was unexpected was Julius and the deep thought he seemingly fell into. What? You see, where Subaru thought he'd find annoyance, he instead turned to find something almost like jealousy. There was an earnest yearning Subaru could sense behind Julius's contemplation. Mm -hmm. He never did say what it was that had him distracted, but... Is this jealousy from Julius' side towards Subaru? Which goes to show the whole part about how Julius is... Uh, you know, he's a knight. He's a chivalrous knight. But that's the problem. And we had a conversation in episode 1, season 3 about how your knightly ways are kind of closing off your heart and you can't say what's on your mind. And that's what Subaru is doing. Subaru is just being himself and thriving. And Julius sees himself kind of chained up by his duties and responsibilities of being the most chivalrous knight. And is that the jealousy that we're talking about here? Something about Subaru's proclamation had led him to lose track of the conversation. Al would then go on to re-explain the message he got from Amelia, but something about him seemed different too. Sus. Ever since their intense exchange before the speech, Subaru found Al to be noticeably off. Hmm. He wasn't carrying himself the same way he usually did. Is he not calling us Kyoda anymore? Is Al really upset that we gave the speech and we're going down this heroic delusion slash reverie? So, Subaru actually proceeded to ask him about it, inquiring as to why he was being so sulky. He needed to know since they needed him for this upcoming fight. 
since their last one didn't really go too well, Super wanted to make it clear that they needed his help now. <laughs> but if you look at the cover picture of the counter-attack arc that's going to happen in February, again, Al's not doing anything. Everyone has a different matchup. Even when we're, you know, doing the matchup uh, selections in the meeting, like, Al just was chilling. He's not going with Priscilla and Liliana. And he's just doing this in the, in the poster. Like, he's thinking, what are you doing, bro? It was a genuine request Al knew he couldn't deny, but the way he accepted it wasn't that great either. Hmm. There was this chilling anger that Subaru could sense from behind it. I'm not against helping out. Al, you, this dude, this is not the time to be doing this shit, bro. Al, this is such dangerous moment. We need to fucking unite. What? But you're still being so sus. And I'm not against helping out. What? Was, was that is Subaru's path of going down the heroic reverie that bad? I don't know. But Al's got his different agenda, and he might help out. He might not. A mysterious aggressiveness was attached to every single word he spoke. This was a wild rage Subaru knew he recognized before, but he couldn't remember from where he'd felt it. <laughs> Arc 3 Subaru? Is Subaru recognizing his own wrath that he recognizes from Season 1 and maybe Season 2? Al is Subaru thing? Maybe Al is Subaru? Maybe Al is supposed to represent Subaru if he was never, you know, going down the right path? Who knows? All he knew was that Al's hostility was something familiar. Mm. Fortunately, Priscilla would enter to change that tone. That hostility was familiar, huh? Oh my god, Al is Subaru theory, bro. But again, we might be going down the rabbit hole. It could simply just be different things that seems like it, and there's nothing about them that's actually the same other than these different behaviors and personality traits. Maybe Al is... <laughs> I still want to believe Al is fucking Natsuki Kenichi. But no, Kenichi wouldn't fail like this, I don't think. Al is Roswell? <laughs> Why not? Well, Al seems to be the version of Subaru if he took on Roswell's ideology and sacrificed everything for one thing only, right? I, I don't think uh, Subaru's dad would ever be like Al, because Natsuki Kenichi is such a giga chad and he's just perfect. Completely, bringing a whole new perspective to the conversation. It was as she got caught up, though, that Subaru would step out to handle some of his other conversations. So, first was Otto- Also, the way that, like, Al greets Priscilla makes me think about Subaru glazing Amelia saying EMT. Is it just me? Or did you guys feel that way, too? Like, his whole charade and, like, shenanigans, his voice acting and physical behavior, it's all just gushing for Priscilla. It's, it just feels like EMT, EMT, but it's PMT, <laughs> Priscilla Mega Angel. I, it's something about that was so off. Explaining why he did what he did, basically highlighting the level of concern he had for Amelia and Subaru. He was constantly thinking, planning, and observing in a way Subaru didn't even consider. Auto. Saving him day after day without him even realizing it. This was something Subaru couldn't even begin to express his gratitude what for, a valuable but ally. would stop him before he could even try. What he needed to focus on now was finding darts and getting the tone back from him. Darts gonna be dead. Subaru's conversation with Wilhelm was next, starting with a friendly warning about what might happen when dealing with Felix. You see, since he was still blaming everyone for not helping Krush. Oh my god, Felix is just a bigger L in the source material. At least in the animes, Felix is kind of like coming to terms and being like, man, I really couldn't do anything, huh? Subaru, but you, you, you were able to save Krush. Not save, but like mitigate that curse a bit. And I still couldn't do anything. But <laughs> in the source material, we had to specifically warn others about Felix lashing out. Subaru was one of the people he probably resented most right now. Damn. As the only one. You resent for what? That I saved your fucking queen? I sacrificed my hand for your goddamn queen that you can't even protect and you're mad at me? Like, be mad at yourself, Felix. Like, goddamn. One who could have prevented Crucia's condition. The fact he didn't was something Felix couldn't really forgive him for yet. So, there was a good chance Felix would say something he didn't really mean. A few insults that were just Ugh. a reflection of the emotions he couldn't control right now. Typical demi-human behavior. Ooh, that's... That's a wrong thing to say. That's very specious. But now that I think about it, is Felix being a cat boy 
why he's so emotionally volatile? Is he just more and more just, you know, unable to control these, I don't know, wild instincts? Wilhelm would then go on to discuss the necromancy problem, stating some interesting names pertaining to those who could be related to it. There was the hero of the demi-humans, Libre Fermi. Oh, names mentioned Libre, Fermi, hero of demi-humans that, <laughs> that Teresa had probably slayed. Pertaining to those who could be related to it. There was the hero of the demi-humans, Libre Fermi, the great strategist Falga Cromwell, then the evil- Cromwell? A oh, witch? Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I was focused on Cromwell for a bit because Tensira, Leon, but what the hell is this? Of the demi-humans, Libre Fermi, the great strategist Falga Cromwell, then the evil witch Sphinx who, just like Satella, carved her name into history with blood. What? These were the kingdom's Witch? greatest enemies from the demi-human war decades ago. Which The Sphinx? ones responsible for leading an army of the dead against them. Army of the dead? What the fuck? Sphinx in particular was the worst because she alone killed indiscriminately on both sides. The hell? She killing just humans and demi-humans? This is the, you know, the demi-human war shit is crazy, man. Sphinx? Which of what? What sin? She had created an ocean of blood without even batting an eye. Well, like, was she actually a witch, though? Or is, she, is it just a title? I, I, I don't know, like, like, which of what sin? So, as a witch that Subaru had never heard of before, he was naturally curious to know how she was associated to the others. The fuck? That's when Wilhelm would reveal she was only called a witch out of convenience. Okay. So not an actual witch. It was just a title that she was going by. Making her an existence slightly different from those of the true witches. What that fake witch meant is that unlike the other witches who, though dead, still somehow remain alive, Sphinx being destroyed in the war should mean she actually is dead. Should. <laughs> Keyword, should. Now, what about the soul, though? Can the soul be somewhere else? I don't know. How her magic remains is a different question, but it's likely the corpse soldiers are a result of her. And that makes more sense, how Wilhelm was explaining necromancy and that the user of that power is gone now. So Sphinx is that person, gone, but this is how it's working. The whole Edo Tensei stuff, Sphinx. Well, at least her specific taboo anyway. Now. The anime did well to explain the Estrella family rift after because it made clear where everybody's issues came from. Heinkel. Wilhelm blamed Reinhardt, Heinkel scorned Wilhelm, then Reinhardt took all of it silently. And I didn't know that Heinkel and Reinhardt had a father-son relationship like no other. What? It, it was kind of vague. They had a deep, deep bond though, right? It sounds like Reinhardt might have been just the biggest daddy's boy ever. And Heinkel might have even just loved Reinhardt so much back in the day? I'm not sure, but it sounds like that... This, there, there's something between father and son here which is very deep that I didn't realize until the most recent episode. Only in time did Wilhelm start to blame himself. Since he was the one who convinced his wife to abandon the path of the sword, he believed it was him who caused the sword god to abandon her. Yeah, the inheritance of the sword, sword saint blessing, right? down to Reinhard during the subjugation. He felt he caused a betrayal the sword god could never forgive, thus the reason it made her lose her divinity in battle. It was punishment for giving up on what she alone was blessed with. This brings us now to Krush, which was a scene I feel might have been a little bit rushed in the anime, reason being that a lot of Subaru's inner thoughts were left out. Okay, I wonder if those inner thoughts made him hesitate, because I was shocked at how Super was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna touch the curse, boom, I got it, okay, I'm gonna touch it even more. I, I thought that he would be like, whoa, this is crazy, I'm not sure if I want to do this, but he just, in the anime, just no hesitation, took all of it. He was deep, not all of it, but most of it from her face. He affected by the painful state Krush was in, and that made him start to wonder all sorts of questions. All doubted her virtue and looked down on her noble spirit, but none ever considered maybe she called him here for something else. Love. No, <laughs> it's because Subaru was so reliable in this timeline to her, right? No, he was instead selfishly bracing himself for the blame he felt was inevitable. So, when Krush revealed it was all out of concern for him, Subaru immediately became disgusted by his own gross level of pettiness. He couldn't believe his own short-sightedness when all Krush was doing was thinking about him. That's good, because Subaru, like, has this 
he has such a high standard for himself and he's so strict and harsh to himself that he always blames himself for everything. When will there come a moment where Subaru starts to kind of let go of that? Maybe more moments like this when Cruz shows that she actually was showing concern. Like the first thing that she said was like, are you okay to Subaru? When I'm like, damn, like you're going through all this shit and you're still thinking about him. She was worried he might be afflicted with the same pain that she was. This was an unforgivable sin Subaru couldn't help but apologize for, leading to a reaction that had him reaching out to her. The contact which would reveal, maybe Krush could be saved. The thing about Subaru being able to absorb the curse himself though was that whatever he took in wasn't equivalent to what he took out. With only Krush's left- What he took in is not the same as took out? Whatever he took in wasn't equivalent to what he took out. Hmm? With only Krush's left hand and part of her face being healed, Subaru's entire right arm had changed because of it. Yeah. It showed this wasn't an equivalent exchange like how he thought. Hmm. Like, we got more. Like, Krush, we took a bit of curse off of board, it, it impacted us more, is the point he's making? If anything, the exchange was something like 10 to 1 or more. Okay, okay, okay. That being the case, if Subaru was to absorb Krush's curse in its entirety, it's likely no part of him would remain unaffected. This was- What happens when your dick gets affected by that? You got the dragon's dick. What do we know about it? Well, it regenerates. <laughs> what are we gonna do, bro? Just cut that shit- Well, what? What's the point? What's the utility, the function in that? There's, there's nothing. There's, there's no function in that. It was a consequence he was more than willing to accept, though leading to an emotional exchange where Krush would have to tell Felix to stop Subaru. Of course, Felix wanted Krush better more than anyone, but even he couldn't go against her wishes right in front of her like that. It was a challenging decision that really tested his resolve. Stand down, Subaru Felix. Too. This made Subaru's line at the end all the more impactful because despite all the pain Krush was currently going through, she was willing to bear it so that Subaru could follow through on it. If anything, it motivated Subaru to make sure he could. It was after that Wilhelm. So sad, dude. It's just. It's like, goddamn, how many more L's is Felix gonna take until Felix has a moment? Will Felix ever have a moment in the show other than just constantly, you know, uh, being shadowed by other people and blaming himself for all his, you know, incompetence and then lashing out at other people due to those negative emotions? Like, is, is Felix gonna have a moment? I don't know. I don't think so. It's fucking three seasons deep. I'm not too sure, man. <laughs> Sucks, but hey, it's... I don't know what Tape's thinking, you know, with Felix, but I'm, I'm sure he has a plan, man. I'm sure he has a plan. One would ask if Subaru's right arm was truly okay, to which Subaru would respond just as you'd expect. If all he got were these nasty scars, then that was a price he was willing to pay in order to save Krush. But it's not just nasty scars. This feels like irreversible things happening to you that impact you beyond just aesthetic looks. Now, there may be some positives from it, right? The regeneration factor, I think, is pretty huge that we can get our leg or arm cut off if it's the cursed inflicted parts and it'll regenerate. And I'm not sure if we really feel pain from it either. I, I, I remember someone saying that the inflicted reasons are like numb, painless. I, I, I don't know if that's true. But uh, it's, it's crazy how a person whose powers is centered around dying and returning by death he's slowly becoming immortal <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about immortal but it, it's gonna be harder and harder to kill him well it's just the arm and the leg now if his head got inflicted and you cut his head off that shit would grow back on right so then how do you die b b loss of blood heart getting crushed vital organs like i don't know where Tapi's going with this but the leg and the arm. With this shit all together, what's Subaru gonna do? Is it gonna be a benefit? Can he use like new powers? We'll see. Sure, he was a bit reluctant to permanently disfigure himself, but if there truly was no other solution, then Subaru was ready to cover his entire body like this. Jesus Christ, man. Taking the sins of others. Subaru constantly just represents the Messiah, man. He knew he would just have to apologize to Amelia, Rem, and Beatrice later. Either way, this whole thing was yet another mystery added to that body of his. 
Mm. There was Return by Death and his resistance to the Witch Factor, and now the Curse of the Beast fighting against the Curse of the Dragonblood. True. Subaru truly had no idea what it was going on inside of him. His body is a mess, man. There's so many different things just happening, right? Because, like, already we had Return by Death. Sure. And I think that is an authority that we're kind of borrowing from the Witch of Envy Satella, right? I, I don't feel like it's, like, Witch of... Sorry, the Authority of Sloth. And then, again, we also have the Authority of Sloth. Invisible Providence. Our gate is also broken. Busted. We also have... Um, what is it? The, uh, it? It's something to do with controlling Ryuzus, right? It's about, like, is it the Herald of Greed? I forget the exact term, but in Season 2, there was something that uh, allowed you to control, right? The, the greed-related shit. I forget. It's due to Echidna's vow and whatever she placed in us. Apostle. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apostle of greed. That's the thing, right? So he's an apostle of greed as well. What, is, what else does he have? Um, well, shit. Now he has, you know, he was already cursed in Arc 2 with, you know, the Olgarms, the Hellhounds. And now we have the Dragon's Curse in there. It's just a cocktail. His leg and arm is infected. Like, there's so many things just happening in his body. That's fucking crazy. The part about remembering eaten by gluttony, I think that has to do with like uh, the association with the witches. Like, I, I, when, when, bro, imagine Al knows who Rem is. Could you imagine? Well, like my guess on why Subaru seems to know, like, like, <clears throat> like people's name memories gets eaten away, but like he still has it is because he somehow has a connection with the witches. Al made too? If we ask Al who was Rem, <laughs> would he slip up? <laughs> he also is very against Rem and Ram. Based on the web novel cut content, I don't know how much of that is really consistent with the source material at this point. In any case, when returning to... Why Sibir remember Rem? You're 15 minutes behind, right? I just spent like the last 5 minutes just talking about why. There's, there's no way you're just listening to me tonight, right? It, it, it's the connection with the witches, right? That's what we're just going off by, right? Finalize the key parts of the plan. Subaru decided not to tell anyone what just happened with Krush. Since he intended to save her whether people wanted him to or not, he decided to avoid any conflict and treat it as an ask for forgiveness instead of permission type situation. Okay. When Priscilla announced her bold move next, Subaru knew he had no right to contest it. If they had allowed Krush to fight before, then she was fine to do so as well. Besides, to Subaru, her power and swordsmanship was at least similar to that of Krush's. Hmm, so maybe better. Question, I want to think that Priscilla's better. I'm glazing. In her challenge, her decision, well, that had led to some serious shade being thrown towards Krush. It was enough that Wilhelm felt the need to step in and defend her. Do not think me a fool who renders herself useless in the opening scenes, or some weakling who never had the strength to stand and fight in the first place. God damn, but that is Priscilla, Wilhelm. I do not believe I can allow that to pass without a comment. I am certain you could not possibly be referring to my master as a fool, could you? <laughs> what do you think, peasant? <laughs> of course Priscilla is. Of course Priscilla being Priscilla, stood by her words and even doubled <laughs> It sounds as if you have someone in mind, old man. <laughs> She is just so fucking sassy and petty. I love her. Downed. She truly believed anyone forced to leave before the main show had even started certainly wasn't fit to be the lead. And it's so easy for Priscilla to say that when, you know, she's not the victim, but that's her entire point. It's that if you are already out, that means that you were never meant to be. It is a very absolute extreme line of thought that, like, skill issue. Like, you're not here because you're just trash. <laughs> Wonder what she thinks about Rem. Who's Rem, though? She was expressing her disappointment in the person she thought was Krush. Anastasia was the one who had to calm things down, bringing the discussion back on course with regards to how Priscilla planned to beat Wrath. Well, as dangerous as it was, Priscilla made it clear she wouldn't have chosen a fight she knew she couldn't win. Yeah, we got Liliana, and, you know, she doesn't seem to really be affected by Wrath uh, authority. Maybe due to how up in her own ass she is. She's so head high, narcissistic, so confident, egotistical. 
that her heart could never be united with the masses. Maybe we go with something like that. You see, with the very logic of the world proceeding in a way that was most convenient to her... Pris there it is again. That whole line is how Priscilla said, right? She's always the winner. She's always favorable. See, with the very logic of the world proceeding in a way that was most convenient to her, yeah. Priscilla knew defeat wasn't even a possibility. It's... And there's another line. I was from, like, um, season two, the third trial. I think it was Priscilla's voice where she says, See? I win again. I came out on top again. I remember a line like that from the trial three in the future. That's why she could have absolute confidence in both her and Liliana's safety. Now, Reinhardt receiving the blessing of judgment, then using it to determine Liliana's power is pretty much as OP as you think it is. Fucking crazy. It's the first time I've seen him just call a blessing on command. And it's not an RNG blessing either. He selected he called out and selected it it's just crazy is there no divine protection of like you're good against archbishops <laughs> is there some bullshit divine protection where it's just like yep you are just immortal and invincible against uh witch cult members so to answer your question yes reinhardt can wish for whatever blessing he wants i think it's stupid that there isn't a blessing like that because it seems to just be so trivial and arbitrary of he has the blessing to never get sugar and salt wrong. Who comes up with this shit? Of course, Tape does. Right? But you could, if there is something so stupid like that, you could think that many different variations, possibilities, it's just endless imaginations. Should he desire something when he needs it, then whether it be the gods, the world, or fate itself, something out there would make it happen. The Bruh. limits of said blessings aren't exactly known, but the author has mentioned their. Wait, what is this frame? Why does he look so bad here? <laughs> Wait, the head looks way too small here. What the fuck? This might be the worst frame of Reinhardt ever. This is season one content too. And the production value was so fucking high. Yeah, this shit's hilarious. Usually just minor buffs. Not something totally game-changing like a blessing of teleportation. There's mm. really no point trying to understand how it works, though, because at the end of the day, Reinhardt will just do whatever Reinhardt does. Okay. As for how Subaru perceived this power himself, the whole thing felt incredibly wrong. I think this was everyone's reaction, right? That was certainly mine. Because he was like, all right, give me a second. I'm like, what's he doing? Boom, I got a blessing. I'm like, what? What do you mean you got one? And it's, it's also, we, we, I'm so glad that we watched, sorry, we finished the... um. Which cult translation cut content because that also talked about Od Lagna in that video, right? And at that point, I was able to make the distinction of, oh yeah, Od Lagna is kind of responsible for, you know, giving people divine protections and blessings and shit. So, yeah, I guess he just has to hook up, bro. He just, he just, the world bends to him. I mean, it's stated that, like, if Reinhardt is in the same proximity as other magic users, they are useless because mana will bend towards Reinhardt's whim. Reinhardt has no mana internally, which is also a crazy idea because he's so powerful. Why would a powerful being like him have no mana? Well, maybe the headcanon here could be interpretively like uh, the world, the mana as it exists is inferior to be in Reinhardt. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying like, it's just a bullshit story theme reason for why there is no mana internally for Reinhardt because he's too special and no one's worthy. But again, everything around him just bends. He just controls that shit externally. So like, he needs to be kind of placed somewhere else. And luckily, Subaru, he can't really use magic right now if he's not with Biko, so it doesn't really impact him at all. As amazing of an ability it was, he couldn't help but feel something was off about it. Now, Something is very off about it. He's like God's chosen one. Switch over to Liliana and her own meager blood. If Reinhardt's God's chosen one, then what does it make Subaru? The witch's chosen one? The devil's chosen one? I don't know. Blessing. This simply allows her to convey her feelings to others. Normally it's telepathy limited to those she's intimate with, but it seems singing has expanded that range to everyone. It was information Priscilla already claimed to know, so the fact everyone had gone to such great lengths just to verify it, well, that was simply absurd to her. 
Okay. It was a testament to the heroics Priscilla was putting on in her own way. Okay. She didn't need a blessing to determine that Liana could do this because she had already entrusted her fate to the fact she would. <laughs> Just Priscilla thinks. It was yet another display of her often overlooked ingenuity. Mm. Still super- Just instinct. Pure vibes. Assumptions. And she's just right. She's always correct. Wanted to Is this arrogance ever gonna bite her in the ass? <sighs> I don't know. The downfall of Priscilla is definitely gonna be due to her entire character. Her always being so cocky, arrogant, and prideful. There is no balance of it. She just embodies that so- so much. I'm sh Pride has always seen before the downfall, and even if Pri Priscilla has been enjoying the advantages of pride, like, it's, it's, it's gonna burn her. One of these days, she's gonna get too close to the sun. She is the sun princess, after all, but like, this is a story of Icarus, maybe. Aren't you getting a, bit, a little bit too close to the sun? To reduce any risk where he could, because where Priscilla believed his concern to be completely misplaced, Subaru didn't want anyone to die. As much as it would have benefited him and the Amelia camp, Priscilla's death was not something any of them would celebrate. It was a firm stance that fully- Wilhelm might after he heard Priscilla calling Chris trash. ...he caught Priscilla by surprise. Moving on to who fought okay. lust. The reason Reinhardt felt the need to protest Wilhelm's decision is because his swirling bloodlust made it clear he wasn't in the right mind to. Oh, what did, what did Wilhelm say here? He says something so stupid at this line that I was- I broke out laughing. Does anyone remember this line? It was so ridiculous. He, he, he was basically saying, I'm crashing out and it's justified. I'm the sword demon and I've just always been making mistakes or some shit. I forget. Absence of a clear mind is common in the battlefield. Yeah, there, there was something so ridiculous that he said on this frame that I just busted out laughing. There was a clear demeanor which made Wilhelm seem focused on something other than the fight. Revenge. This is what Reinhardt picked up on, leading to the attempted intervention we see in the anime. This, however, only spurred Wilhelm to resolve himself more, unleashing the conviction of the sword devil through and through. He had this fierce grin along with a strong desire for battle, a confident attitude that I can only imagine was far different from what we got in the anime. The plea that finally convinced Reinhardt to let it go was Garfield's request to help Subaru. Okay. Since he too had to abandon his camp to repay his debt, Garfield could only beg for the help of someone who was stronger than him. Reinhardt. It was a powerful display that showed he now accepted his weakness and the result of his failures. Wow, already Garfield development. Development that's been pretty sidelined for Garfield. So, with all the matchups now decided, the yep. last thing to do was distribute the conversation mirrors. It's looking like Biko's gonna wake up though, right? I mean, if Biko's up here, and I think we're using Alminia, maybe. We see the Dark Crystals, uh, maybe. With only three available and four teams in total, that meant they needed to be divided by importance. Bro, the hell is Al doing? Also, someone said that this cover picture confirms Arc 6 characters. And somehow, this is already a confirmation that Season 3 will indeed have Arc 6 included 38 episodes altogether. I don't see Arc 6 characters. Every one of these characters exists in Arc 5. What the fuck does that mean? So the first went to It's just random people commenting bullshit, right? It's just like, I don't see anyone new here. I'm pretty sure we know every single one of them. To Team Wrath since learning of her defeat was the most essential. Look at Al, the next bro. to Team Greed since there was a good chance Reinhardt beats him quick. Then the third to Team Lust due to the sheer amount of numbers she had. Reason being that if Ryan Original Season 3 poster? Does anyone have that poster? Original Season 3 ReZero poster. Does it exist? Ah, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, uh, um, it's a teaser. This one. And, uh, yeah, if, if we look here somewhere, I, I'm sure there's, um, Sorry, it's a bad image right now. There's a kid. No, this is Reed, I think. Reed. Maybe not. It's not. It's a long haired dude. I mean, this girl. I, I think this girl, right? I, it's probably this girl. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't recognize. <laughs> Kitty Tucker's on his fucking. <laughs> you see this shit? Kitty Tucker is on his fucking force as Liliana sings on top of. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, um, it's looking like it's this girl. And that's pretty much it. It's this girl and the long-haired red person in the back that I assumed was, um, like, Von Austria Reed or some shit. But does it make sense to have a heroic figure from the past show up here like this? I, I don't know, but this girl and this character is the only one that I don't really recognize. Third season, it says. I mean, it's just a teaser. The dragon is, uh, is that not just Garfield? Father? That dragon has a halo at the top, actually. That might actually be Volcanica, the divine dragon. Who knows? Yoshua? I didn't forget Yoshua. But, you know, with letters and stuff, letters always turn out bad, right? And ReZero and Yoshua was the one delivering the letter regarding news about gluttony, so I'm not gonna expect too much from him. But that teaser poster I don't think is confirmation, but I, I would love it if Arc 6 happened. Reinhardt was to become available after beating Greed, then it would be good to know whether Team Lust needed his help or not. So, this was the plan Subaru put together for them. A counterattack which had everyone all tense, up until Subaru made his declaration that they were going to win. One thing I wish he did was do that pose, his finger up, do the Natsuki Subaru pose. That's where I'm going to end it for this video, so if you liked what you saw and want to see more, then yes, leave sir. a like and check out the previous episodes. I'll be covering the last bit of this episode in another video. Okay. A smaller second part to the finale that'll probably come out next week. I love this, by the way, Annie News. We're milking it, right? Part one, part two. Milk that shit. I'll talk about it early on stream on Sunday too, so yeah, if you want to brother. Your zero knowledge and win some prizes, come join us over at Twitch or here on YouTube. Thank you so much, Mr. Annie News, for another great season's worth of content for me to react to. Always appreciate the effort and dedication that he puts into these videos. And here's a link to the video. Please go check out Mr. Annie News' channel. I don't know what kind of content he'll be covering, but I'm always a big fan of his cut content. It's just the perfect format to react to for, you know, our type of content. But I'll see you next time.